All right, we are back, and we're going to talk WWE TV. Now, if you follow us on YouTube, we actually separate this uh, content out for those who want to see just this conversation because, obviously, we're playing a game that is based on the real world, it's still real to me, dang it, uh, of WWE TV. So uh, we are in the road to Royal Rumble. We are in the road to the Elimination Chamber now. And there's been some big things that happen with WWE Day 1. So first, Sheik, let's talk about the road to Royal Rumble. Mm -hmm. Who are you excited about? Rusty and I have already kind of given some of our thoughts, but who are you thinking is the guy and the gal that are going to take the rumble? Um. So before I before I say anything, did you all see that supposed leaked uh, thing that uh, people were sharing about the Royal Rumble? No, I I don't. I, I am I are we allowed to talk about that? I don't know. It's leaked. I, don't, I no, I didn't see anything. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so whether this is real, I mean, look, this could be one hundred percent fake, and some per, you know, some person Subject did it to troll, to right? Yeah. Um, so supposedly, and again, allegedly, because you know, like I'm covering, I'm covering our bases here. There you go. I like it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So allegedly, this is like an actual, you know, like this was the thing. Um, they're saying CM Punk is going to win the men's rumble. Okay. And Bailey is winning the women's rumble. Okay. Uh, so again, whether that's actually real or not, who knows? Uh, mm -hmm. I mean, certainly the momentum is behind CM Punk. Yeah. You know, with returning. So uh, on that one, I could 100% see that that being the case. Um, I don't see... Cody uh, okay look even with CM Punk let's just say in a in a different alternate universe CM Punk didn't come back right I don't see uh Cody winning back-to-back -back rumbles personally mm -hmm. um um also in kind of like with this era of like a lot of like new people coming in and kind of like there being so few uh uh old timers or veterans whatever whatever term you want to use right. um like I don't see Orton winning the Rumble again. I don't see, oh, uh, you know, I don't see John Cena coming back and winning the Rumble or anything like that. So <laughs> right. I think from, from kind of like this moment forward, it's all going to be like new people winning the Rumble. There's not going to be any repeats. Okay. Um, that being said, uh, I mean, I would like to see Gunter win. That's, yes. that's me. Uh, but uh, I mean, I, I really do think leak or not, I, I, I seriously see like CM Punk winning um, okay. the Royal Rumble and finally getting his main event at WrestleMania. At WrestleMania. See, that's where uh, I think it's really interesting in how things have turned out that could they have planned this? I mean, we assume based on situations and things that, you know, you can't talk about uh, that CM Punk wasn't in the plans and had to be written into the plans, uh, obviously. But you've got two kind of competing, we'll just say stories, because that's where yeah. they're at. You've got Cody, who, uh, if you watch Wrestle Talk, they've started just going, Cody's never-ending story, right? Yeah. Like, because it just keeps going. Uh, and there's rumor that maybe he won't uh, win at WrestleMania, which would give it till the next year, it, whatever. But you've got the never-ending story, and then you've got, you know, the Chicago's favorite son story of this Royal Rumble is exactly 10 years to the, you know, event where CM Punk left the company. And so you've got two really interesting perspectives there. One would be, you know, CM Punk comes back, he he loses, they do the maybe the uh, moment where like your favorite character, you know, comes in and boom, they get kicked out right away and everybody just goes, what in the world? We're going to, you know, like Roman wins lull. Um, or, you know, you've got Cody who wins back-to-back -back rumbles, which puts him in the category of your Hulk Hogan, your Steve Austin. You know, it's these guys who, like, this is an elite category of people who have won the rumble even twice. You know, even once is amazing, but twice mm -hmm. is like, oh, this is a big category. And, of course, you mentioned Randy Orton, that Randy would be, you know, in that top echelon with Steve Austin for winning three. But, mm -hmm. uh, yeah, Cody's story if he doesn't win the Rumble, then is how do you get to Mania? Uh, and we'll talk about a wrinkle to that in just a moment. But mm -hmm. yeah, I could see CM Punk winning. I think that would be, 
uh, it would be interesting for sure. What about the, the you mentioned Bailey as a potential link. What what do you think about the women's rumble? Uh, so the women's rumble is definitely like the, you know, like anything could happen. Yeah. So, uh, by the way, so, uh, back when Ben Corbin was, uh, if I don't know if you remember that name or not, huh. um, when he was doing like the weekly, he, he did a, he did a thing where like, you know, he had a bunch of, he had a bunch of people to talk about the weekend character and kind of like give okay. a score. So I mentioned Bailey is and will be my favorite of the four horsewomen. Really? I have been a Bailey fan for the longest time. So from NXT to her change, you know, to the, right. like the darker one, right? To the Ding Dong Hello and her current run, I love Bailey. Oh, That's <laughs> she's, awesome! She is my wife. Who I, I enjoy her so much. Yeah, right. Um, I think she's a phenomenal wrestler. Right. I okay. really like, and the thing is. There are people who are good as a heel. They're good as a face. Right. But the in-between is like, eh, you know, right. like, you know, they can be serviceable as a heel. They can be serviceable as a face. But, like, they're right. really, like, they're only good one or the other. Yeah. Bailey excels in all, you know, in, in everything, in my opinion. Nice. Uh, and I, like, I would be 100% cool with her, with her winning that. Uh, yeah. Like, you know, I, I really love Asuka. I like, you know, it's like there's, I, I will tell you that just uh, like, I, I know I don't mean to like go on a side note tangent. I love how good women's wrestling has gotten in like the past, like five years, 10 years, whatever you yep. want to, you know, like whatever you want to say. Um, I like, I, I know everybody has their opinions on, you know, things in general i'll tell you right now i just i know again more a side note on a side note i'm not big on intergender wrestling personally just oh, just throwing I'm that out Andy kaufman <laughs> yeah <laughs> but i think like i said i'm so happy that women's wrestling is as good as it is right and uh like i love Rhea. like i said i love eo sky i you know it's like there's just there's so many talented women on the roster oh yeah and i'm so happy about that right um and yeah it's just like you know on the women's side it could be so many people i just like i just i just hope it's not like bianca i just i want somebody <laughs> else <laughs> you right. know what i mean uh, no, I'm, but, I'm with you there. And I mean, you got to think about the story of like who's holding the title because the idea is yeah. going to WrestleMania. So you're yeah. either talking about EO, who I think has been actually presented very well as the champion. It started a little wonky and then, uh, you know, she ended up being presented as a, a really good champion. And she's got this faction around her now. Uh, I mean, obviously she did, but it was before it was like, oh, that's Bailey and her sidekicks. Now yeah. that's kind of shifting. So they have that narrative that Bailey's journey leans into that I think is really good or you go to Rhea and I don't know that Rhea's really got anybody who's coming up the chain that's like oh yeah that's the obvious like obviously Bailey versus EO is is the path they're going or at least it feels like it yeah. so that's obvious that's where we could go that's a story that's got itself momentum uh yeah. they would have to build momentum from scratch so if for me if it's not Bailey, uh, you know, something going to the EO story or maybe even Ky maybe they shock us and Kyrie turns or something like that. Mm -hmm. If it doesn't go into the EO story, then you've got to think who's coming after Rhea. And I mean, they've they've built up kind of these newer, you know, new to the roster, at least, you know, your Zoe Starks and your, uh, you know, your Diamond Mine faction and, and things like that. Um I think if they go with someone, if they're not going to go Bailey, they need to go with someone surprising. And I think it needs to be like a, a Candice LeRae or somebody who's like, you know, you know, they could go. They need that underdog story. They shock everybody. And then they go after Rhea and potentially win because um, then Rhea has, you know, a, a reason to then turn the story around. And now she's the the one who's been spurned. And so now she's going out for revenge. So, you know, how are they going to keep that story going? Um, you know, but if it's not Bailey, then it needs to be something of a shock. It can't be, you know, uh, one of the four horsewomen unless there's a return. You know, we know Charlotte's out. Uh, it can't yeah. be Bianca because we've told that story. And Bianca versus Rhea could be great. But if you're going to do that, you're not going to do it with a few 
weeks, you know, two months worth of build. Like you need to build that as a clash of the Titans kind of thing. So yeah, yeah I'm, I'm with you. I'd say, I'd say, I don't think it'll be Bailey. I think they're going to go that story a different route, but I also don't know if it's not her, then who I, I don't think I have a, a choice to so far. Yeah. But, but just like, but just throw it out. Like there are so many good, choices to go with because like oh, you yeah. said like like a zoe starks i i love her i am such a big fan of hers yeah and so like if it is somebody like her or it is like a zelina vega or something like that you know yeah. like i would i like i would totally be for it like you know the only the only person that i wouldn't want to win like said, outside of the four horse women because like i feel like so money in the bank and the royal rumble should be for an up and comer, not somebody who's established. So right. like, like, you know, like I know we use like Bianca Belair, for example, yeah. Bianca doesn't need to win the rumble or need right. to win money in the bank to be, right. to get that push to the, to the upper level. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, uh, just as long as it's not them, the only other person is, I really hope it's not Nia Jax. Cause uh, <laughs> I, I like, especially with the, uh, so uh, like when I was watching day one, uh, right. And it was like, uh, you know, and, uh, you know, it's like, it's uh, you know, it was the whole, like, I broke your nose. I made you the man. You owe right. me. No, like, blah, blah, blah. And you this and that. Oh, like, I was yeah. just, I'm over her. The, I, I really, really, uh, I've never been a fan of hers. And right. I, yeah, I, I wish she would uh, just quietly bow out. <laughs> Well, if it's not a Candice LeRae for me, I agree. Uh, Nia, J- I don't want to see Nia Jax in that spot. Uh, although props or props are due, the story they told and the way they finished it on day one, that was one of the few things that I actually felt felt was a good level on day one. But if it's not that, the only other thing I could think of storyline wise is if Chelsea Green were to win it yeah. and then go on and beat Rhea, be the surprise upset, and then just becomes like the mega diva, you know, like the yeah. everybody should bow down and worship me. I mean, she's yeah. already there, but like giving that belt just adds mm-hmm. that extra layer where of like flamboyance and, and added intrigue where she's just, I am the dominant champion. And like, maybe, maybe she has people kiss her feet. Like she yeah. adopts the <laughs> queen of the ring automatically. It, you know, just, uh, it would be, that would be fun storyline wise. Oh yeah. Yeah. So let's talk day one. Uh, we're going to get to the big return, but other than that big return, uh-huh. What do you think of the the way that they hyped it up as like this almost a B level pay per view, but on Raw? Uh, I thought it was. I, I mean, here's the thing: there's going to be solid matches no matter what, right? Um, it's the the question is always going to be how good they make those storylines because look, the talent like you know to be in the WWE. Or, you know, whether it's WWE, AEW, you know, New Japan, whatever it is, you've got to be like an, at an upper echelon, you know. Yeah. Um, it's something that uh, I always, th- you know, I think Mick Foley, it was it either in Mick Foley's book or somebody else's, but they basically said that, um, you know, there's this many football players, there's this many mm-hmm. hockey players, there's this many right. basketball players, but there's only this many people on like, you know, on professional, you know, Right. Uh, in the like the WWE and stuff, so you got to be like pretty like pretty up there in order to like you know to to be a, to be on TV, right? Um, but that being said, uh, I thought everything was you know like I thought I thought it was fine. Um, uh, I'd have to I'd have to like just so I don't forget anything. Like I'd have to pull up like the list of every single match, but no, no, I enjoyed day one. Uh, I yeah. thought I, I thought everything was fine, um, except I I kind of want to know like what the um, tag match with uh, Kofi and um, you know yeah. uh, and Jay Giovanni was going to be Ludwig uh, versus... versus Imperium. But right. I mean, other than that, it was fine. Like you know, yeah. I mean, was it? Am I gonna am I gonna remember this day one for the rest of my life? Probably not. But was right. it a solid, yeah. like enjoyable show? Absolutely. Right. Well, and the last time they used the day one, unless I missed one, but I, I'm pretty sure it was just one other, and that was where Brock uh, dominated Big E and and yeah. took the took the title, which 
So Brock versus the New Day, I, like that's the story they need to tell, and they're just not. But obviously with Big E's status, uh, yeah, yeah. So I would say for me, day one felt like it was getting hyped up as something bigger than what was delivered. Um, mm-hmm. I, it felt like a fairly normal raw. It felt like a good normal raw, but it it just felt like a normal raw. Whereas it felt like the the thing that they hyped it as is ooh, this is the start of the big chapter and and it just ended up being you know a Seth match and and I I know each of us it seems like kind of has art like you don't like Ray Myst- the weenie in the mask and professor <laughs> talks about how he can't stand Shinsuke and I'm getting more and more to where Seth Rollins is the guy I just don't want to see his content I'm just so bored by him out of my mind and um, so ending with all that but mm-hmm. then of course the one big notable thing and we got to talk a little bit about was the return of The Rock. Yeah. I got The Rock's say. back. The Rock's on the TV. Rock. <laughs> yeah, well, see, and this is this is behind the scenes. Like we did talk about it on a previous podcast episode, but every single Raw and SmackDown, Rusty throws into our Discord open chat for all three of the factions. Yeah. So three hundred of us people plus yeah. a straggler here and there. And OMG, it's the Rock. OMG. And then <laughs> this time. Rusty wasn't watching Raw because he was getting ready to go on this uh, vacation. And so I put into the, the chat, OMG, it's Rusty, OMG. And I w- I thought I was being subtle enough, but people were like, wait, 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 there, is The Rock back? I was like, oh, no, no, I was just I was just trolling Rusty, guys, just trolling Rusty. Yeah. And then once, yeah. you know, once they got to watch it. But I just got to say, the setup to that, I know people were divided on some of it. I loved it. You know, the whole, we are going to bring back a former world heavyweight champion and then it being gender. I laughed out loud right away. I thought, ha, that was some expert level trolling. But then I don't know if he's been practicing just that for months and months and months, but I think gender gave uh, one of the best promos he's done. Um, I'm not big on the I'm foreign, therefore I'm the bad guy. But the way they actually did lean into that and subvert it, where he called Mm -hmm. out and said, ha, you know, I'm playing the foreign heel character, but you're the bad guy for for me making me the bad guy. I I love that. Um, And I just got to say, I I, on Monday, my my son and I were were watching that part where The Rock came back and he mentioned uh, Iron Sheik and, you know, was pointing to the heaven and talking to Bubba and all that kind of stuff. Yeah. And I had to turn to my son. I was like, because he goes, wait, Iron Sheik's dead. And I, I had to turn to my son and go, no, no, not, not that Iron Sheik. Yeah. <laughs> not you. Not yeah. Iron Sheik 84. And he was yeah. like, no, no, I know. But there was like this enough of a look of confusion yeah. that I was like, but do you really? I know yeah. what you were thinking. <laughs> yeah. Well, so. no, uh, I, like I, so here's the thing. Like I, I will tell you this: I figured that they were gonna have some, because you know, uh, I guess let me let me. Okay, I knew it was gonna be someone random because okay. they said we're bringing back a former WWE champion. Right. So like I like here's the thing: like I knew that there was gonna be some sort of segment or. Right. Thing coming out with it uh, in my heart of hearts I actually hoped it was going to be Big E oh yeah I had that thought too so the the I love Big E and I was actually uh, for those who don't know this you can actually go back uh, and look at uh, uh, look at Money in the Bank when Big E won uh, I actually had a front row ticket to really? money in the bank in dallas yeah oh well, i mean fort worth technically but yeah you know uh yeah uh actually wow. if you go back so if you look at the hard cam uh like you know where smiley face guy is yeah you know uh, the, the dude in the green shirt with the smiley face if you look all the way to the right you will see a someone with long hair and a white face mask that's me okay uh and i was so excited when he won uh, it was also it's it's the it, it was the year that Nikki Ash won and then Biggie right. won. Uh, right. But yeah, uh, I love Biggie and I understand that Biggie said that if he doesn't wrestle again, he's perfectly content with that. Right. But I was hoping that they were going to say like, "Hey, I'm back and I'm cleared and you know right. I'm good to go." And I declare I myself for the Royal Rumble. 
yeah, I wish nothing for the best from him. Now, would he win the Rumble? Eh, you know, I mean, right. I, I, you know, but still, I, I wish that he would come back and say, hey, everything's a success. I'm feeling fantastic. And it would have warmed my heart. Right. I'm just telling you that right now. Oh, okay. um, but yeah, but having Jinder come out, I mean, it was fine. I mean, it was fine. Kind of the the whole like, I know I'm a foreign heel, but y'all are the real bad guy thing. Um, that's kind of like a repeat of the Muhammad Hassan <laughs> right. thing, you know. Right. Uh, so I mean, I was just like, mm. I mean, me, I'm just telling you my opinion. I was like, no, no, mm, I, on I, it, I but, agree. Or, I mean, I think it was some of Jinder's best work in his entire career, but unfortunately, yeah. because it's Jinder, that's not saying that much. So, yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, but yeah, um, The Rock coming out, uh, I mean, I love the Iron Sheik, uh, you know, imitation, you know, that right. he was doing. But also in the same vein, okay, uh, it was a by the numbers Rock, you know, right. thing, you know, I, I, and that's not to say, I'm not saying I don't like The Rock. Right. But, you know, it was just like, a, you know, like, okay, I'm the, you know, it's like, here's his catchphrases. Here's, you know, it's like him, you know, it's like insulting his opponent, you know, Jinder tried to attack him, spine buster, people's elbow, right? cheer on the, you know, uh, cheer to the crowd, boom, done. Like, uh, that to me was kind of like, like I said, a little like by the numbers. Agreed. Agreed. I mean, I think, you know, if you're, if you're only playing the song once a year or twice a year, you want to play the greatest hit, but at the same time. Yeah, it was. So I think, you know, kind of bring us into this home stretch here. Mm -hmm. The thing that distinguished it from just a, uh, okay, whatever, The Rock was there, was the little promo at the end, right? Yeah. Sh should I go sit at the at the bar? Should I go sit? And then, of course, or should I sit at the head of the table? So behind the scenes chatter is that Australia, which is where Elimination Chamber is, Paid for WWE to come there, right? They bid. That you know, Triple H is always talking about. Oh, these places are bidding for us to come there. Uh, that seems to be real in this case. Mm -hmm. And part of their okay, we want you guys to come, but could you please bring Dwayne? You know, like that was the one piece that uh, I think they were asking for. So mm -hmm. is that? forced by external things and the rock is, you know, been able to do it because of the strikes and all that kind of stuff. I don't know, but where it gets really interesting to me is if, if it's not elimination chamber, if it's mania, what does that do to Cody Rhodes? Is the rock versus Roman reigns, the goal now for WrestleMania 40. Mm -hmm. What do yeah, you think? Uh, yeah. I, I mean, uh, is it, uh, you know, and I mean, I know it adds a bunch of layers to like what's going on. Like, you know, is Roman going to wrestle both nights? And, right. you know, it'll be like, you know, it could be like CM Punk versus Roman night one and then The Rock versus Roman night two. Or, you know, uh, could it finally be when Damien cashes in money in the bank? Like, who right. knows? Like, but yeah, I, um, it's like, I mean, I, I know you referenced it before or earlier with the never ending story. <laughs> ah, <laughs> but like, than I do. <laughs> is it going to be like, are they going to stretch it out to SummerSlam? Like, you know, because look, here's the thing Roman, uh, okay, if Roman's t dropping the title, right. it's going to be, it's going to be WrestleMania, right. it's going to be SummerSlam, you know. It's, I don't like, here's the, I don't think it's going to be a uh, Royal Rumble and I don't think that it's going to be a uh, Survivor right. Series right. personally, if it's going to happen. Right. But yeah, it's just one of those things like, when is it going to happen? Like, right. you know, uh, right. And well, there's if they rumors do... that, that they want Roman to beat Hulk Hogan's streak, which would be until September yeah. of this year. So that would mean another year because if if, if you're going to get him to september you might as well just have him be champion until wrestlemania 41 but i think wrestlemania 40 being a big you know that's a round number pay-per-view round number wrestlemania cody's story is there i don't know i i think if they do i think cm punk goes against seth and i think he wins this is my just prediction mm -hmm. And then I think Cody, I don't think Cody wins the Rumble. I think he wins the Elimination Chamber to give it that higher stake. Like, how am I going to get to WrestleMania? So he wins the Elimination Chamber. And that was all before The Rock. But 
with the yeah. rock in the mix then okay so if roman faces rock at elimination chamber mm-hmm. there's got to be a shenanigans ending if it's a clean victory then you lose the intrigue of well nobody could be the head of the i mean i know we talk about solo sokoa is going to be the head of the table someday what if jay uso's the head? realistically rock is the one who could come in and say nah i'm i'm there so so then that puts it to wrestlemania so maybe CM Punk and Seth close out night one, but Roman and Cody open it. Uh, mm-hmm. And then Rock and Roman, you know, so Roman goes in, he's lost the title to Cody night one, and then mm-hmm. he loses the head of the table night two. That might be the interesting way to go. But for me, I, I really truly think Cody's story is the one they need to keep on. I know it's like, ooh, okay, well, now we've got these new toys. Dwayne and, and Phil, like, let's run with that. But if they were to, to interrupt that story, I think it'd be a mistake. But I also think the the intrigue, the reason that they've drawn this out, and it has worked as well as it has, even though I still think Cody should have won last year, uh, is that the intrigue is in the chase. So mm-hmm. once Cody has the title, he doesn't really have a story anymore. So this is my booking of it. But I really think you book Cody Roman to open Mania, Cody wins... And Damian Priest immediately cashes in and wins. So Cody mm-hmm. had the belt for 10 seconds. And mm-hmm. then he his story can be, I was the champion. I completed the story. I, I fulfilled my father's legacy. Mm-hmm. But it was only for 10 seconds. And now, yeah. Damian Priest, you ruined my life. I'm coming after you. You know, mm-hmm. that that's intriguing storytelling afterwards. But mm-hmm. if Cody you know just gets looked over for the rock then it's like oh great yeah do they do they legitimately keep roman champion for another year yeah oh my goodness i don't know thoughts on all that and then uh anything you want to say before we close it out oh no i was gonna say uh i there have been so many long streaks now right um now i don't like, I don't necessarily think that. Uh, no, I could totally see what you're talking about with Cody losing to Priest, you know, fairly quickly. Right. But on the same token, like, I. It's just, in the world of professional wrestling, it's so hard because you can be like, oh, this will this will never work. And then you're right. like, oh my God, look, it worked. It was great. Yeah. <laughs> Perfect. You know? Exactly. Um, I got so bored of Bianca's long reign. Oh, yeah. Oh yeah, and then I think Gunter's reign is fantastic, but I've also got tired of Roman's reign as well. No pun intended. (laughs) (laughs) So, if Cody does win, like if they hot shot it back and forth, I don't see that working because. And what I mean it in the sense of like, okay, let's just say like Cody wins, I'm the champion for ten seconds, right. and then Priest Priest gets it, and then Priest loses it the next pay per view. Right. That to me, like, I also like, I also didn't like the era of like, do you remember how it used to be? Like, okay, this month Cena won it, then Orton won it, then Cena won it again, right. then Orton wins it again, and right. then like it was just going back and forth every month. Right. It's there's got to be a good balance between super long reigns and then only being champion for you right. know a month. So I don't know. Like I I, I could agree. totally see that happening. I just I I don't know. It's there's got to be a way of finishing the story, but also not like keeping it going, right? And keeping people bored with it because. I do agree with you. If if they drag it, if they do drag out the story any longer, right. you're gonna be like, okay, when is it gonna end? Kind of like um, yeah. I, I I forgot to mention this earlier. It's kind of like a uh, like I know you said you're bored with Seth Rollins. Sorry. Every Sorry. single it, it's kind of like so every single match is like, is his back gonna or is right. his back gonna do? It? I mean, okay, come on, his back's been okay. That's what you said every single month, like the past like eight months, nine right. months. It's fine. It's kind of like the same thing with the Royal Rumble. Oh, my yeah. God, who's going to take out the big show? Oh, you mean like how they've done it every, every year for year. the past 15 years? Oh, how yeah. are they going to – yeah, they're going to do it just like they've done every right. single year. Like, right. <laughs> Yeah, I agree. Yeah, but I agree with you. But, yeah, that's – that's um, 
this is going to be an interesting season. That's pretty much all I have to say about that. Yeah, I agree. And and you know, I I think what I think you've brought up part of my angst with Seth. I think because Roman has been the long-standing champion. And by the way, if he breaks Hogan's record, why not then go for Pedro Morales's record or it's Bob Backlund next? Either way, why not go for the next one? And then you're just like, well, Bruno San Martino's got the record. That would be 7 years. Like, do we want Roman to have the belt for 7 years? I mean, I it's just like it's a logical fallacy, you know, but still to say, okay, at what point does he lose it? So if Roman's belt is going to be unchanging for all this time. And they do have this other belt that Seth holds. That belt shouldn't be hot shot. It shouldn't be attitude era where it's like almost the 24 seven title or at the time was hardcore title. Um, But to the same degree, if no belts are moving, then it's just like, eh, whatever, you know, Seth does need then to be the champion who loses and doesn't go back to the belt, right? It needs to go to CM Punk and then it needs to go to where, and Ultimately, it needs to go to Gunther, but I want him to have a lengthy title reign, right? I don't want yeah. his to be super short. Um, so you need that, like, whoever it goes to, but that belt needs to go around. Otherwise, you've got the two titles that are just, well, it's just Seth and Roman for the next 40 years. And I think I think part of the angst I have towards Seth is actually from Roman having the title so long that I'm just like, okay, they created this belt for Seth, but it needs, like... Give AJ Styles another run on top. Give, you know, whoever, like, I, you know, Randy Orton's back. Let him get that. Give LA Knight a title for once, right? Yeah. But it's kind of like gatekeeping. Uh-oh. Well, <laughs> if you're not on uh, if you're not on the, the chat here, we, uh, let's see. There we go. You oh, back? We got disconnected there for a second. Can you hear me? Yeah. Yeah, I can hear okay. you now. Okay, yeah. good. I was like, oh, well. I guess we're good. I mean, we're almost at the end anyway, but then it was yeah, just like, I was like laughing. I was like, well, that's the ending. <laughs> <laughs> right. We finished the story. It just happened yeah. abruptly, but yeah. all right. Okay. Well, like, any final yeah. words and then go ahead, you know, as, as you do plug your, your content, where can we find you online? How can we stay uh, up to date with your streams, your YouTubes and all the things that come with it? All right. Yeah. So um, as always, I, uh, you know, it's like, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe, and follow me on Twitch at IronSheik84 for more WWE Champions action. And uh, I'm on YouTube, the socials, just all at IronSheik84. So make sure to, uh, to give me, uh, to give me a follow. Uh, I do plan on streaming more. Uh, I know I always say this, I I am, uh, I will, things in my life have uh, been uh, a bit more stable. So I'll be able to, uh, you know, stream a lot more often. And also, if you haven't already, uh, uh, Lee and Rusty have uh, their own Twitch uh, setup now. Uh, so uh, go to twitch.tv slash champions chat podcast and give them a follow. They only have 31 followers right now. That is oh. not cool. Make sure to give them more. <laughs> Thank you. Well, we've only done uh, two streams so far, but <laughs> yeah, I know. But still, like you know, just just do that, you know, get them get, get them up there, and then sure. um, don't forget to also uh, subscribe to them on YouTube. It's free, so free is also good. Yeah, check out their uh, their three minute previews, and uh, yeah, give show them some love. That's right. Well, and thank you guys. This is our first uh, for 2024. Rusty will be back with us next week, and we'll uh, be back in our normal flow. I want to thank Iron Sheik 84 for being our first guest, our first repeat guest, and now first guest co-host all the way around. Amazing guy. And and I just got to say, we've said this in another episode when you weren't here, but I'll say it again. Uh, since we've become kind of the official content creators and stuff too, uh, everybody we've talked to, there's not a single person who has a bad word to say about you. Like th- behind closed doors, you know, I'm, mm-hmm. I'm, I'm not bringing up uh, conversations I shouldn't. Like behind, you know, other chats you're not involved in, every single person, every single content creator has said, dude, Iron Sheik is amazing and for champions chat in 2024 i just want to say we've got some exciting things coming up uh december was our you know introductory month as official content creators we're going to start to see some official streams coming on the main champs channel uh obviously iron cheek mentioned our own twitch is up and going and uh they're going to start doing some community spotlights i hear on on some of our stuff so we'll get 
a little bit more uh, out into the community there. So so just be sure and follow us on all those. And as we always say, and I mean it, new mm-hmm. year, new you, but this is a an honor to be a part of this community. Uh, you guys are, are incredible. Uh, you're loved more than you know, and it's an honor to smash gems alongside you. We'll see you next time. Bye.